Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today it is Thursday, it is the, what is it? It is the 26th of August. Like everyone on booktube and book twitter and bookstagram and everywhere, all of the book related social media basically, I am obsessed with autumn. I love autumn, it is hands down the best season of the year and I love it and I'm so excited that autumn is going to start very very soon. Where I live it doesn't really feel like autumn yet because it is August and I'm starting very early but I want to feel like autumn. I want pretty trees, pumpkin spice lattes, I want rain, I want all of the autumnal things basically and that is why I'm creating my own little autumn today. What reminds me of autumn the most is Over the Garden Wall which is an animated tv show that is the most autumnal thing in the world and I love it so much. If you haven't seen it, go watch it right now. Seriously, stop this video, watch Over the Garden Wall. It'll only take like one and a half hours, two hours maybe, to watch the whole show because every episode is only 10 minutes long. So yes, watch the whole show, come back to this video because this video is gonna be kind of a 24 hour readathon type of thing with the theme of Over the Garden Wall. So I've made readathon prompts for myself relating to each character of the show and I'm gonna write them all down and then kind of pick maybe three, probably three prompts. And then obviously read a book that fulfills that prompt and I am so excited for this. So I wrote eight prompts, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight prompts relating to each character. So I've got Wirt, Greg, Beatrice, The Woodsman, Greg's Frog, The Beast, Sarah and Adelaide. Those are all of the characters that I have and I have a prompt that kind of relates to each character. I've already decided that I really want to do the prompt for Wet, which is read a poetry book because... And I secretly whisper poetry to myself in my room at night. Clearly, he's very into poetry and the clarinet, but there are no books relating to clarinets, so we're sticking with poetry. I recently bought Serious Concerns by Wendy Cope because I saw it in Ancali's video because she really, really likes it. And the poem that she read from it sounded so good that I just had to buy it. And I'm so excited to read this. And I've been meaning to read this for a while now. So now I finally will. So this is definitely the first book that I'm gonna read for this readathon. With the rest of the prompts, I think I'm just gonna write them on a bit of paper and then pick one for each. Or oh, let's make it fun, actually. Let's make it fun. I think I might do like a wheel and then spin it and then see whatever it lands on and I'll do the book for that character. Okay, I just watched a video on how to make a spinning wheel and I think I'm gonna have to go out and buy a fidget spinner. Now that's a throwback, isn't it? I don't even know if I can buy one somewhere in town, but I'm gonna try and we're gonna get crafty now. So, I made a mess, but I also made a thing. First up, of course, I've already said this, but we have Wirt, and for Wirt, I had the prompt of read a poetry book. And like I said, I would really like to read this collection of poems by Wendy Cope. So that's gonna be the book for Wirt. So now I'm gonna show you what characters I got, and then we will pick the books for these. So it does spin. Kind of. The fidget spinner actually broke, so that's great. Um, I had a little stopper thingy here, but it kept snapping, so I'm just gonna use my finger and hope that that doesn't snap, but we shall see. Let's go. Stop. Greg. Okay, so that is my first prompt. For Greg, my prompt was to read a middle grade book because obviously Greg is a tiny bean, he's a child, and he would enjoy middle grade books. The book that I chose for this prompt is Other Words for Home by Jasmine Waga. This is a book that I've been meaning to read for so long now because I've seen it quite a few times and I mean, look at this cover. It is just, it's so beautiful. I'm so excited to read this. It seems like a very short read because it's, I think it's kind of in verse. I think the audiobook for this is also on script, so that's going to be really helpful. So yeah, this is the book for Greg. Beatrice, okay. For Beatrice, the prompt that I picked was a book with an animal on the cover, preferably a bird. And if I can't find a bird, then just any animal will do, but preferably a bird. So I had a look at my TBR cart, and there aren't many books with animals on the cover in this TBR cart. However, I did find one, and that is The Empress of Sort and Fortune by Nevo, and that actually does have a bird 
on the cover as you can see here so it fits the prom perfectly and it is also a very short book you can kind of see there's a theme here I don't want to read too much because I only have till tomorrow because I'm working on the weekend and I won't have much time to read so I'm gonna read these books primarily today and tomorrow so yeah this is the book that I picked for Beatrice Adelaide Okay, so I think I'm gonna have that as my last prompt. That means there's four books. Adelaide in the show is of course a witch and that's why the prompt for Adelaide is read a book that has witches or magic, some kind of witchy themes in it. And for that I picked Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Suyumura. I think. I've not heard that many people talk about this but um, I've seen a few booktube videos where people absolutely love this book so I am so excited to read this. Obviously I feel like with this cover and the title and like the magical castle it all seems very fairy tale like to me um, and I think that fits perfectly to Over the Garden Wall because obviously the whole vibe of that show is like a fairy tale so this book is just perfect for this prompt and for the show and for the whole readathon that I'm attempting to do. So, this is my TBR for the next 24 hours. I think it's manageable because obviously these three are very sort of short, they're gonna be quick reads and then that one is the only one that kind of is like a proper normal length of a book. So that might take me a while but I'm still hoping and praying that I will get through all of these. So yeah, let's get reading. I like how just by the first poem you can actually tell that the author is British, which I didn't know, but the first poem is called Bloody Men. And yeah, bloody men. Bloody men are like bloody buses. Come sail with me far out into the long rolling waves where we can drift out together between the pitch black seas and the glittering skies, each folding us slowly into each, toward, towards the light and away from light, knowing neither up nor down. Come sail with me and gaze upon the moon and stars until we know not if we are gazing. It's now 20 to 8 and I've only just finished my first book. So this is not going like I planned, however, I'm just going to read some more tonight and then read until whenever I go to bed tomorrow. I'm also going on a little trip tomorrow to Pooh Corner, which is in Hartfield. I realised that I didn't even explain what Pooh Corner is and it's not nearly as disgusting as it sounds. It's basically this shop in Hartfield which sells loads of Winnie the Pooh memorabilia. It's like a gift shop that also has like a cafe adjacent to it. Hartfield is obviously where the author of Winnie the Pooh came from and the Ashdown Forest which is around Hartfield is actually what the Hundred Acre Woods is based on and basically in the Ashdown Forest you can find Pooh Sticks Bridge and Pooh's House and those kinds of things that were in the story of Winnie the Pooh and it's just very lovely. So yeah I probably won't read like all of the time tomorrow but most of the time at least I will try. So the book that I finished was of course Wendy Cope's Serious Concerns. You can probably tell by the amount of little penguins that I've put in this book that I really really enjoyed this. Poetry isn't something I typically read so I wasn't quite sure what to expect from this one but I just enjoyed this so much. Maybe I am actually a poetry reader and I just didn't know. It's hopeful, it's sad, it's reflective, it's really funny and everything at the same time. I just resonated with so many of these poems um, that's why I have so many sticky tabs. I think the orange is still my favorite. Oh my penguins are falling. No. Yeah, I think the orange is still my favorite just because it's so simple, but it's still so like So for some reason I can't find Carly's video anywhere. So I'm just gonna read the orange to you myself um, I'm sorry. I'm not very good at reading poetry, but we'll try anyway The orange at lunchtime. I bought a huge orange the size of it made us all laugh I peeled it and shared it with Robert and Dave. They got quarters and I had a half. And that orange, it made me so happy, as ordinary things often do. Just lately, the shopping, a walk in the park, this peace and contentment, it's new. The rest of the day was quite easy. I did all the jobs on my list and enjoyed them and had some time over. I love you. I'm glad I exist. I just, I, what? <laughs> what? That's so good. I'm just gonna go cry now. I think... The reason why I like this more than I've liked other poems 
is because it doesn't have these random line breaks that often. That's one thing that has always bothered me about poetry because it'll be a sentence, but then it's like randomly broken up into weird bits and it doesn't mean anything. That doesn't add any meaning to the sentence. And that's always bothered me about poetry. But Wendy Cove doesn't really write like that. Um, when there's a line break, there's kind of a break in the sentence, if that makes sense. You kind of take a little break automatically when you say, the whole sentence so it's not like the sentence is weirdly broken up and that's why i really really like this i guess that's just my taste in poetry obviously that's not the same for everyone but yes i definitely want to read more poetry after reading this because i thought this was great now i'm gonna move on to i think i'm most in the mood for other words for home so i think i'm gonna be starting this now morning so i finished other words from home last night and i <laughs> they ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine perfection i can't even really put into words how this book made me feel it was it was just so beautiful so this book is about judah who is a 12 year old girl from syria and her and her mum have to travel to america because of the unstable situation in syria so they have to leave her dad and her brother behind in syria and travel to the US. I'm really sorry about the construction noises going on. I hope they don't come out too much on the camera, but we shall see. <laughs> when they get to America, Judah kind of struggles to fit in. She has to learn the language and she has to deal with all of the racism and discrimination that she faces in the US. I think the book references 9-11 in that um, there was something that happened in the book that then made everyone be extremely racist towards her. And especially when she started wearing the hijab, she experienced so much more racism from everyone in America. She has to navigate her new school, her new friends, and even a school musical that she might try out for. I just, I, uh, it was just, it was beautifully written and it made me cry. And I just, uh, I love it so much. She's so small and, <laughs> I love her. I love the way the story is written. It's a really quick read as well because like I said, it's kind of written in verse, so it's not all actual text. And that just worked so well for this story because somehow the author managed to put so much powerful meaning in so little words. It was just so beautiful. There's so many quotes that I wrote down in this, like this one, for example. America, like every other place in the world, is a place where some people sleep and some people, other people, dream. It's, I, that's just so well written. I, I love this book so much. It was incredible. It is such an important read. It is so heartwarming, yet gut-wrenching and perfection. Led through the mist by the milk light of moon, all that was lost is revealed our long bygone burdens mere echoes of the spring but where have we come and where shall we end if dreams can't come true then why not pretend how the gentle wind beckons through the leaves as autumn colors fall dancing in a swirl of golden memories the loveliest lies of all
We just got back from Pooh Corner and it was amazing. Yeah, I had such a lovely time. We did have to walk on the road when we tried to get back to Pooh Corner because I didn't realize that there's no footpath and then I didn't want to go back and it was terrifying. Don't do this, don't do this children. Um, it was not good. But yeah, so I actually finished reading The Empress of Sword and Fortune by Nevo and let me tell you, it was amazing. So this book is about a traveling cleric, um, they're non-binary and their name is Chi and they meet an old woman called Rabbit and Rabbit then starts to tell them stories about the Empress Inyo, who's the Empress of Salt and Fortune, obviously, because Rabbit actually used to be her handmaiden so she knows all of the inside scoop on the Empress. So Chi as a cleric actually is tasked to write down these kinds of stories. So with the help of old artifacts from back in the Empress's time, Rabbit then tells Chi the whole story of the Empress. I don't want to say too much about it because obviously it's very, very short. It's just a novella and I don't want to spoil anything for you. But wow, this was so great. I wrote down a quote for this one as well. I know I'm saying a lot of quotes, but all of these books are just so beautifully written. I just, I can't get over it. So the quote that fascinated me in this book was, angry mothers raise daughters fierce enough to to fight wolves and in the context of the story it just has so much meaning as well and it's just it's just so well written so i had my hair dyed as you can see it wasn't quite what i wanted but after furiously washing it a thousand times when I came back from the salon, it actually looks quite nice now I think. I quite like it. It is very autumnal so I am ready ready for this season. So the technical difficulties that I had was I lost the footage. I think I deleted it from my camera because I thought I had already put it on my computer but I hadn't because they're nowhere so I'm basically missing the last of this vlog. I'm clearly a very professional YouTuber. I thought I'll update you on what I actually thought about these books anyway, even though it's like almost two weeks later. So, Lonely Castle in the Mirror. So I started this readathon on Thursday the 26th of August and I finished this book I think on the Saturday or the Sunday after. So it wasn't quite a 24 hour readathon, but that's okay, we'll be kind to ourselves. It's just gonna be a weekend readathon instead, so yeah. Anyway, this book perfection. I know I already said this about other works from home but this book was just perfection. It was brilliant. It was just so so good. So you might ask what's this book about? Let me tell you. This book is about seven students who are all avoiding going to school and then one day they all discover magical portals that take them through their mirrors to this mysterious magical castle and in their castle they meet a girl wearing a wolf mask as you can see. She calls herself the Wolf Queen and the Wolf Queen tells them that somewhere in the castle there is a hidden key and that key unlocks a room and when you enter that room you will be granted one wish. They only have until the end of March to do this. Um, the book starts in May I think so it kind of follows the Japanese school year and they only have until 5 p.m. every single day to enter the castle and search for the key. On the Goodreads description of this book it says this heartwarming novel is full of joy and hope for anyone touched by sadness and vulnerability. So me basically. This book just made my heart ache. I was in pain. I would, I just want to hug her so badly. She's so small. When I was Kokoro's age, so Kokoro is the main character, when I was about her age, so like 13, 14, I also really struggled going to school. I just did not have a good time at school. I didn't want to, I didn't feel like I belonged there, I didn't feel like I had friends there and reading this just put me back into that mindset and, and just this book is just, it was so, it was just so beautiful. I loved the writing style, I loved the kind of glimpses into Japanese culture. Just the relationships between the characters were so wholesome and beautiful. The ending, the ending, it was just... <laughs> I wish I still had the original clip of me talking about this because I was just... <laughs> <laughs> The ending just like, it brings everything together so perfectly. It was just so good. It made me so happy. Just the friendship was so adorable. And like, look at this cover. Just, do, do you see that? It, it's just so cute. It's so wholesome. It is adorable. I just, I loved it so much. And I think this might be one of my favorite books of this year. So, the wrap up. 
I have finished all of these books. This was such a good reading weekend. I'm just, I love it. I love it. In fact, I love this so much that I think I might want to do an actual over the garden wall readathon. Rude. They're clearly against the readathon. Okay. I really do want to make an actual over the garden wall readathon, um, but I don't know if anyone would be interested in that. I don't think I have a big enough following for people to actually do that with me. The weekend I was actually doing this readathon, I was kind of thinking about what kind of prompts I could have, and I basically made like a whole bingo board full of prompts for this readathon, and it would just be so cute, and I'd, I'd really love to do that. So let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in joining an over the garden wall readathon. I think I would probably do it in like October time because that feels the most appropriate appropriate for Over the Garden Wall. Let me know if you're interested in joining the readathon and then I might actually do it. So, wrap up these books. Right, the first book I read was this one, Serious Concerns by Wendy Cope. Brilliant, I loved it, really good poetry. I think I need to read more poetry like this because I was actually so into it. This was obviously the prompt for Wirt, read a poetry book. Then this one, Other Words for Home by Jasmine Waga, which was obviously the prompt for Greg, which was reading a middle grade book. This book was just so damn good. It was perfection. Like I said, I loved it. I loved every single part of it. I loved the characters. She felt so, it's just so lovely. I just want to hug her. The writing in this was so beautiful and hard hitting. It was so sad yet heartwarming and I loved it. Then I read The Empress of Sword and Fortune by Ni Vo which is obviously a novella and this was also just absolutely brilliant. The writing in this again was just stunning and the whole story, the whole world building was just so damn good and I just wanted to know so much more about this world. I wish there was like a bigger book about this that I could read all of the stories that happen in this world because it was just so brilliant. I loved it, you have to read this. It's such a quick read, it's literally like 100 pages, read it. And then of course we have Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Surimura. Just the friendship in this and then all of the things that you find out in the end and like just everything, just everything. I just loved it so much. It was so relatable to me, especially in the beginning. It made me hurt and it made me sad and it made me happy and it made me hopeful and it made me everything. Yes. So this is my wrap up, all of the books I read and they were all amazing. And I think that's just because I was doing this readathon. So if you wanna join this readathon in the future and also read amazing books, then just let me know in the comments down below if you'd actually be interested in joining a readathon like this because I'd love to do it. If you're not subscribed to my channel yet, then what are you doing with your life? Just do that right now. Please, thank you very much. And I will see you next time. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.